Hey everyone, my name is Robert and today I'm going to be talking about my first time backpacking, my first experiences and this video is to motivate you if you've never been or you're thinking of going, is to show you that I was super unexperienced, I had nothing prepared, I didn't know anything but I went, I survived, I'm alive and I want to share with you guys. So this video is going to be divided in three parts. I'm going to talk about my first ever hike, which is Mount Monotnock. Then I'm going to talk about Mount Washington and then a little haystack. I'm going to tell what I learned, what I wish I knew in those trips. So stick with me. Mount Monotnock was my first ever hike. We started actually at 2.48 in the morning. We went driving from Massachusetts all the way to New Hampshire. We got there at... 4 31 in the morning what i brought to mount mononok i literally brought normal clothing i had a beige t-shirt regular pants nike shoes a hat and that worked we're talking about a three hour hike a regular three hour hike of three thousand feet in, up in the air and i was okay well i struggle a lot i'm not gonna lie it's a very strenuous um hard terrain it's very rocky the beginning of the trail is very flat and it's very well marked, but then as you get closer to the peak, it's very rocky and you actually have to start using your knees and that's when it starts to hurt. We took a lot of breaks and we actually got to the top at six in the morning. So from 4.31 to six in the morning, that's like roughly two hours, right? It wasn't that crazy. Of course, it all depends on your physical. I'm not a person that is very into sports. Of course, I'm very active. I don't actually go to the gym. It was rough, but it wasn't that bad. The place is beautiful. It was such an awesome hike. It was very foggy. You could see all the clouds. I remember when we got up there, it was crazy. It was so magical because there was a point that we couldn't even see trees anymore. And that's when we we're like, oh, wow, we're this high up in the mountain. Right. And it was great. It was beautiful for a first hike. So what I brought to eat, I actually bought some granola bars. I think I we bought um, Dunkin Donuts. Our, on our way there we got like snack wraps and everything we kind of put in our bag i didn't bring that much i literally brought a backpack with me i brought some essentials like extra clothing if it was cold like first aid kit i think and that was it i mean i didn't need that much after we got there it took us so we got to the bottom at 8 49 in the morning so from 4 a.m to 8 a.m that's four hours total right ish four to five hours so it was four to five hours it wasn't that bad we did not encounter any bears we didn't see any mountain lions any bobcats we didn't see any of the wildlife that was scary we saw squirrels we saw rabbits things like that but nothing that was scary um there's no emergencies i think we had data most of the hike the things that i've learned from the hike is definitely the clothing i messed up on the clothing i should have brought better more breathable clothing because i was soaking wet at the end of the hike one thing i learned too is always great to have people with you um, of course hiking alone is also um an option that people really prefer but hiking with people i think they kind of push you to do things they push you to go harder to go stronger up to the trails because you see your friend doing it you want to do it too so it's good to bring fit people people that have um kind of stronger than you so that you can kind of walk in their pace because if you were to do it alone if i were to do it alone i would have taken like three hours to get up there but it was definitely worth it it was awesome i think if you want to do a first time hike i definitely recommend mount monotnock in new hampshire amazing there's a parking lot if it, if that's full i'm pretty sure there's other parking lots um you park there super safe you go up the mountain there's many people there it's a quick hike i didn't bring that much food so that was okay i didn't bring that much water which was okay so it was a pretty good hike. All right, Mount Washington. Mount Washington was my second hike, harder than the first hike because we're looking at a 6,288 feet high mountain. So for this hike, I brought basically the same thing I brought to Monotnock. The problem is that the clothing choice was not great either. I brought boots, like heavy, working boots it was the worst decision i had blisters at the end of the day my feet hurt please do not bring boots to a hike i don't think it's good i brought regular pants regular shirt i looked goofy as heck 
it wasn't that uncomfortable the clothing that i brought it wasn't that crazy i didn't bring special hiking clothes i think i brought a very old backpack i filled it with granola bars with sandwiches water this time i did not bring my big camera i brought a smaller camera um, which is a sony a6400 it was so much easier to carry because it's small it's compact and it was the best choice. So for Mount Washington, I left at 7.17. We got there at like at 10.14. So like that was like three hours away. We got there, there was already many people getting ready for it. Um, we parked at this parking lot and we thought maybe it was too late to do the hike. Places like this, places that are famous like this, like Mount Washington, they have like visitor centers that you can kind of walk inside. They have like diagrams, uh, maps, they sell even backpacks, they sell gear for you to hike. Um, and they have people that work there so they know the hike, they know the trail, they will be able to tell you what to expect, what to do. Um, and we found that helpful because we found a guy that kind of told us that we weren't too late. We weren't planning to get there at 10 in the morning, but he said, you know what guys, you guys can still do it. It's like an eight hour hike. So go for it. And we listened to him and we went and it was worth it. So this hike started off differently than Mount Monadnock. Mount Monadnock was a straight shot, right? It was this big open road of like gravel and like dirt. This one was actually just a trail. It was like your regular, normal neighborhood trail, like literally already in the woods. And it was already kind of rocky. Um, the terrain was already kind of weird and zigzagging. So this one started off a little weird. As we hiked up, we found like a big lake um, and there was pit stops. There was places where people could eat, could sit down. I even found a toilet there. It saved my butt because I was not looking forward to finding a random, a random place scooping up uh, dirt and squatting down and pooping. The place there had like lots of people. It wasn't like to the point that was annoying, but it had a lot of people in the trails. They brought their dogs too, and it's beautiful. It was just beautiful. Um, the sun was out, it was warm. We were taking off our shirts. We were um, sweating. It was a great time. It was a great weather. We did not encounter anything that was off. We did not find any wildlife that was like threatening or anything. It was kind of a straight shot. So as we walked out of the ravine, there was no more trees. The vegetation was minimal. It was just a bunch of rocks. And that's when we started finding ourselves very hungry. We were dying of hunger. We were so tired and hungry. And we started freaking out because we did not bring enough food. And that was the biggest problem. And once we got up there, we had no idea. I, I may sound stupid again. I didn't do enough research. I just went, there's gift shops up there. See this shirt right here? I bought it up there. There's like food, there's bathrooms. And it's crazy because we got there, we're so hungry, we finally sat down, we got some nice food. It's not the best food, but like, it's like school food. That's amazing. If we're super hungry, school food just tastes like a five-star restaurant. It was amazing. After we ate, we kind of walked around. The thing about that, those mountains and something that I forgot to mention before, it's, it gets very cold up there. It gets very windy. So if you bring an extra uh, jacket or something to cover yourself up, it's very important to do. I always bring extra clothing because it, it's better for you to be warm and sweating than to be very cold and getting sick. Right after we ate, we decided to finish the hike. We went down um, another path, right? That would lead straight back to where we parked the car. It was actually not through the ravine, but on top of the ravine, we saw down the ravine, one of the best photos I've taken. One of my favorite photos so far was taken on top of that um, ravine and it was just a great time I my opinion going down it's better than going up for, because if you're going up you kind of like expect to get there like up there and you're kind of like frustrated because you're not there yet going down it's like oh I already did it I finished I'm going down now things that I learned from that trip was that I had to bring more food definitely not bringing boots ever again I'm bringing running shoes to a hike and packing light is it goes a long way if you don't bring a lot of stuff it, it, it just like bring a good backpack like if you have the money and you have the budget buy a better backpack one that kind of like gets like stuck to your waist those ones are very good because you don't get a lot of like back um rash so i think those ones are great so don't bring a cheap crappy backpack definitely bring something better And now to finish, Little Haystack. Little Haystack was actually meant to be Franconia Ridge, um, which is a trail that 
goes over three mountains. Little Haystack was the first mountain, but we couldn't finish it because it was snowing. We knew a little better. I brought a better backpack. I did not bring boots. I brought my running shoes. And we brought a lot of clothing because it's September. It was a little colder. Um, hoodies, beanies, thick socks, things so we don't feel cold. It's better to take off clothes than to not have any more to put on, right? This hike started at 9 in the morning. Um, we got there and it was busy. It was packed with so many people. We had to get a shuttle. We started the hike and it was chilly. This hike of all the three was the coldest and the one that I suffered the most. So the hike was pretty normal, rocks. Um, this one actually had a lot of waterfalls, which was nice and it was very pretty, it was beautiful. Um, we had to cross rivers, so we kind of got a little wet and it was kind of cold, so that kind of sucked. The weather did not help, it was very cold, it was chilly. And once we got up in Little Haystack, it was absolutely freezing. I know the images are not gonna do it justice. Maybe the ones I took with my, my nice camera are gonna show, it was freezing. Literally, we got there, we saw all these people hiding behind a rock that was kind of like facing, it was kind of like a shelter for the wind. The wind was like a piercing knife. It was like cutting us. It was literally so painful. And once we got up there, we sat down in this rock, right behind this rock that everyone was sitting. We were eating, snacking, and it was so hard to like take the camera out, take pictures, because my hands were freezing. I didn't have gloves. We were not prepared. Even though I did not bring boots, I brought like all these warm clothes that were not enough. The views were beautiful. We could see all these mountains. You couldn't see the ridge though. Um, There's this huge fog. It was like kind of like a blizzard happening at the other peak. So you couldn't really see what it looked like. So that experience was nice, but we couldn't finish it. Uh, it was a little frustrating. We learned a lot because we saw people with like better gear than us. They had like fancy backpacks, fancy clothes, fancy spikes and everything, right? The, the trekking poles. And they were looking at that situation. They were like, nope, I'm going the other way. We wearing regular clothes, nothing special. We saw these people prepared better than us. And we're like, if they're leaving, we are leaving. So we started to leave. We walked back the same way we came. And even though it was slightly frustrating, it was worth it because we actually reached the peak. When we're going down, the sun came out. So you could, we could see the rivers and the waterfalls clearly. And it was actually warmer. We decided, well, we started taking off clothes and everything. So it was a pretty good hike. So those are my three hikes, amazing times. It was definitely worth it. I'm happy that I decided to get out of my comfort zone and tackle these big challenges. What I've learned is that gear matters and it doesn't matter at the same time. What you have is probably enough to go on a small hike. All you need is a backpack, running shoes, the right clothing. And what I mean by that is warm or cool clothing, depending on the weather. You should be all set. If you have hoodies, if you have jackets, windbreakers, or if you have shorts and t-shirts, you're good to go. Anything that, like trekking poles and I don't know, all that extra stuff is great if you're doing bigger hikes. If you're going to like a small hike, a three hour, eight hour hike, even an eight hour hike, I recommend literally just using what you have at least to get a sense of it. If you want to spend money, definitely do it. But if you don't have it, literally bring what I told you. Don't forget to bring food. Don't forget to bring water. And for food, bring a lot of food. Bring dry food. Wet food is a little hard like sandwiches, but bring that too. Make sure you bring a lot of things that will make you feel full, but not so full that you want to puke. Do your research. Definitely do your research. And if you want to run, a little bit in the treadmill. If you want to go to the gym um, weeks prior or months prior, do that. It's definitely going to help you. It's going to make your experience better. My experience wasn't that bad, but I felt so much pain. I felt so sore after. I It would have been better if I actually were more active before I tackled these mountains. So I hope this video helped you, um, especially get your mind around the stigma that you need the best gear uh, or the be in the best shape to hike. You really don't. It depends on the hike that you do. You're not hiking 10,000 miles. You're probably hiking medium to small mountains. And if I did it, you can definitely do it too. Okay. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.